Hey, welcome back to Studson Studio. Today is the obligatory Q&A video where I won't be crafting anything, but will instead be answering over 100 questions and obeying one demand, all of which were submitted by my patrons. We'll start with the demand, which was inspired by this friend that was seen in the Kiki's Delivery Service episode. Show your dog! And here she is. Her name is Birdie, and she's a 10-year-old rescue my partner and I adopted at the beginning of this year. She has mild anxiety, but can be easily assuaged with snack. Here she is helping me categorize my trash, and here she is chasing a squirrel in her dreams. And now the questions, which I've broken up into several categories, starting with behind the scenes. What's your filming and crafting setup like? like? Happy to answer this question because I just cleaned up and I'm less ashamed for guests to see my mess. This is the desk where all the crafting happens. I got a couple LED panels set up to light everything, and here's a spoiler for a future episode on the desk. On either side I have a couple shelves holding all of my tools and materials, and by materials I mean mostly trash. On the left side here I have recycled and crafting items organized by material type. We have a wood bin with coffee stirs and random scraps a plastic bin with caps and smaller components, a foam bin that's mostly cutoffs from larger slabs of foam that I would feel bad throwing away. Here's a bin filled with jewelry, trinkets, and smaller metal bits. This one's various dollar store toy pieces. Down here we have uh, more miscellaneous plastic bins, larger lids, deodorant dispensers, bowls, bigger pieces. Uh, some ping pong balls for when I need round ping pong ball shaped things. And then hidden under the desk we have larger plastic and cardboard pieces, classic tofu containers for the nice corrugated texture, apple crates for infinite domes, um, cardboard rolls, egg cartons, cereal boxes, corrugated paper of course. This is just a brief overview, um, but don't worry there's a whole section of questions devoted just to trash coming up later. On the right side, I have all my dirt and flocking on this shelf, sculpting tools and blade refills up here, and then we have paints and glues, model paints and washes, and then a couple top shelf goops up here. And then lastly, over on this shelf is where I keep all of my painting and cutting implements for quick grasping. What, what do you do, do with, with your finished crafts? crafts? Currently, they're all sitting right here getting dusty on this shelf because I like to look at them for inspiration on occasion. Though inevitably I will run out of space, so I've been considering a couple options. A Patreon raffle or charity auction was suggested by a patron, and I think that's a good idea. I've done one charity auction in the past for the Nook's Cranny that I made, but the logistics were slightly roundabout, so in the future I need to look for a charity auction service instead to help with the logistics of handling the financial side. I'm not currently selling anything I've made, but an Etsy shop is another thing I've been considering setting up. For commissions, I am open to hearing offers and project ideas, but because my time is limited I have to feel a shared interest in the thing I'm making, and ideally it would be something that I could turn into a video as well. Do you listen to anything while crafting? Typically when I'm crafting I need to have some sort of music or podcasts playing, otherwise I will lose my mind in the silence. I rotate through a few NPR and New York Times podcasts for my current events fix. For funnies, I'm listening to Dungeons and Daddies and the occasional My Brother, My Brother and Me. For music, it's usually some type of lo-fi chill hop beat to relax slash study slash craft to. Would you consider making an art book with images of all your builds? This is a neat idea, but the process of making a book might be too daunting for now. In the meantime, I might consider instead using an all-in-one domain and website platform to make a beautiful and customizable web presence. Alright, next section. There were a handful of questions about my production process and editing and schedule per video. In an ideal world, the project would be split into two weeks, one week for crafting and one week for editing. There have been a number of videos where this has been the case, though some have taken longer like the Ghibli builds, the Ghibli builds. Others have gone much quicker and completed in one week. Fun fact, the fastest project was the Cyber Shrek Outhouse, which was crafted in one day and then edited the next day so that it could be ready for Christmas morning. All of my videos are filmed in a pretty loose run and gun style because I am very lazy and I don't like to heavily script anything. Sometimes I might think of a joke or a visual gag and write it down, but for the most part they all develop on the fly. After the crafting is done, I'll assemble a rough edit of all the footage which takes about one day. At this stage it's probably about 30% too long, then since I have no script I'll start at the beginning of my edit and slowly narrate, recording no more than a few lines at a time. 
For me, a 15 minute video takes about two days to add narration to because I'm picky about what I want to say. After narration, I'll add music and then tighten up the edit a bit so some of the cuts land on the beats. I aim for a balance of serious and silly, but I have no set number of jokes per minute. It's basically whatever keeps me entertained in the process of narration. Do you have a background in video production and edit? Excuse me for a second. Birdie, leave it. Aside from these crafting videos and my family's version of Jurassic Park from 2002, I have filled up almost all of the time in between with video production, editing, and motion graphics, either for various clients or for fun across other videos spread around YouTube. Up until the beginning of 2020, creating videos for clients has been my day job, but for the last six months I have been putting pretty much full-time hours into this channel. My main goal with starting this channel was to see if I could take my fun hobby and suck all the joy and life out of it by turning it into my job. Last year, I gave myself one year to see if it would be viable to devote full-time hours to this or if I would have to pull back on my time here to get a real job. But so far, the current trajectory has been very encouraging thanks to all of you for watching and the support I've been getting on Patreon. Have you and your family made any other home video cinematic masterpieces besides Jurassic Park? Yes, but they are all locked away on VHS tapes somewhere. You have a similar vibe to the YouTube cooking channel You Suck at Cooking. Are you secretly the same person? It's a good question, but I don't really see the similarities. For one, he uses Wang Janglers. Wang Jangler. Wang Janglin. Wang Jangler. Whereas for me, I'm wearing my Jane's Wranglers. But I will admit that my original intro song was somewhat similar. You suck at crafting, yeah you totally suck. What's your favorite joke you've made so far in your videos? I think the one I just made was pretty good. I also feel like a huge narcissist even answering this question, but I do laugh at my jokes on occasion. I like my jokes as I'm writing them and recording them, but then as soon as a video goes live I tend to hate them. But ultimately I reach a state of being proud of each video after a couple days or so. Also, my favorite jokes are the puns that are physically painful to listen to, like this one. We need windows in a building, but we also need door in a building. <laughs> this is so dumb. Crafting questions. How did you get into crafting and model making? My gateway into model making was in the year 2000 by way of Gundam Plastic Model Building, or Gunpla, when Toonami first aired Gundam Wing in the US. I snap built a few models back then, though I ended up setting the hobby aside until I rediscovered it again in 2017 when I found the YouTube channel Model Making Guru. He inspired me to take one of my old models I built as a kid and try painting and weathering it for the first time. After that I jumped kinda deep into Gunpla, mostly through making a number of cursed kit bashes and customs that you see here and throughout this video. A bit later in 2018, I was playing in a number of D&D campaigns which inspired me to seek out another outlet of handmade hobbying by way of terrain making. Black Magic Craft was the first channel that inspired me to dive deep and try it all out. After watching a bunch of his videos, the first craft I attempted to build was this mossy shack based almost entirely on his Hag Hut video. I made a whole bunch of D&D terrain during this time that hasn't been seen on this channel, but it might be some of the stuff I'm most proud of, mostly because it was made during a time when I had that childlike wonder and inspiration of finding a new hobby. This inn and observatory, which I believe are based on designs from Tabletop World, are still some of my favorite things I've made. As for my favorite build on this channel, that probably goes to the Breath of the Wild horse stable just because of how unique of a building it is, and finding the components to making a horse head was pretty fun. What part of the building process do you enjoy it the least? I actually don't love painting because it's the part of the process where I'm afraid I'm going to ruin whatever I'm making. My favorite part is adding moss and flocking of course, but I also generally love the build process, especially when it's fast and loose and has a variety of textures. It kind of feels like prototyping something. What's an architectural style you hate building? Anything simple and clean. Making a 1980s office park would be torture. What would you say is your main motivation toward crafting and making a YouTube channel about your crafts? I get a lot of satisfaction seeing and feeling the finished product in my hands and knowing what it took to get to that point. But recently, more than the crafts, seeing the videos as finished products are the thing that's been motivating me the most. What's been the most frustrating and most easy thing to make? Most frustrating? Waiting for the super glue to dry when I didn't have accelerant for these bathhouse windows. Easiest to make, video number one, nook's cranny, four walls and a roof, done. If 10 year old you could pick your next project, what would he choose? At that time I was playing tons of Mario 64, so probably a complete level, maybe bob -omb Battlefield. 
Ooh, I was also into Beast Wars at that time, so maybe a custom Dinobot. Who is someone you look up to in the crafting community? Oh man, there are so many. I watch way too much YouTube. The three I will recommend today are Scratch Bashing. His builds using recycled materials and various junk have influenced my perspective on trash greatly. Another one I found recently is Dr. Toys. He makes custom toys and he just exudes so much pure joy while explaining his process. And lastly, Mechanical Fiend. I've recommended them before, but here's another recommendation. Their crafts and videos are always very good videos and never fail to make me smile. Would you consider making any book nooks? I've made one Among Us themed book nook so far, but I would definitely consider making more book nooks if the inspiration struck. What is the most disappointing specialty tool or material that you purchased? This card punch that's meant for cutting out shingles. It hurts my soft hands if I try to punch anything thicker than a sheet of tissue paper. It's slower than slicing out a roll of shingles by hand, and it's inefficient use of material. Zero out of ten. Sorry, Green Stuff World. You make other cool stuff, though. How has your view of the natural world and built world changed since you started crafting? I think the thing that's changed the most is my perception of trash as potential crafting oh. material. But in the real world, I do find myself thinking about how I would build actual structures as miniatures now. In the natural world, I now take greater notice of how and where moss grows and how things age and decompose. These are all just free weathering techniques just floating out in public ripe for the taking. Do you fiddle with or build things even when you're not at your crafting station? The answer is boring, but no, I don't. I am, however, always fiddling with previous things I've built. Can you talk about some painting basics? Black Magic Craft has several videos that do a way better job than I could with this, but in general, a primer coat is used to prep and unify your surface for paint. When I say base coats, I'm referring to the first solid coat of the intended color I'm putting on a model. If I say overbrush, I'm usually painting over my base coat and using a brush with less paint, grazing the brush mostly over raised edges and retaining paint that's already on the surface. If I say dry brush, I'm probably using a brush with most of the paint removed to highlight just the highest edges of detail. If you hear me say matte or gloss top coat, these are layers of clear protection sprayed or spread over a model to protect it from sun or wear and tear damage. Gloss top coat is shiny, matte top coat is not shiny, and there are various levels of gloss in between these, but these are the two main classics I've referenced before. Where do you get your Gundam models? Luckily I have a local shop that is fairly well stocked in kits, but online, USA Gundam Store has been good to me. Would you ever do a crafting live stream? Probably not. The idea of multitasking and speaking off the cuff sounds stressful to me, but I revere anyone that can do it. What are your favorite crafting materials? Ah, the answer to that leads us into our next section of questions. Trash! How can I send you my trash? I'm afraid to open up the floodgates of allowing trash to be sent to me, but it's a compelling idea. I don't have a P.O. box at the moment, but it's something I'm considering, as long as the Postal Service is fine with me suddenly using their services as a temporary landfill. Do you ever buy food based off its packaging? Sometimes, but only if it's a delicious snack I don't mind consuming. What percentage of your house storage is trash, and what percentage is trash and treasure? I assume by house storage you mean craft storage, of which about 80% of it is recycled trash by volume, but it's all treasure. The other 20% is paint and materials I've bought for crafting, like foam and flocking products. I've never been embarrassed about keeping any of the trash I've saved, but I do have things I've been hoarding because they seem like they'd be useful eventually, even though I'm basically just using trash as room decoration at this point. For example, I can't bring myself to throw out this thing, this uh, like a Swiffer mop bottle, or this plastic egg carton, and these takeout containers because of their interesting plastic geometry. I do have a certain walking castle project coming up where I hope to get a deep dip on some of these long kept trash pieces. Most of the stuff I save doesn't have an intended purpose though. I save pretty much anything that has an interesting shape or would be hard to reproduce from scratch. Currently, my favorite piece of trash are these parts from a water filtration system that desperately wants to become a propulsion engine. The most unexpected item I've used in projects are earring backs as door handles. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of these. And the most inspired use of trash, I'm still kind of proud of turning this dressing bottle into a castle in the sky. Have you ever went dumpster diving for other people's trash? Not as an adult yet, but I have fond childhood memories of my dad taking the family to our favorite dumpster for potential home DIY project materials. Thriftiness and resourcefulness were important lessons imparted while growing up. 
Would you ever consider a challenge or events with viewers or folks from your Patreon? Sure, both of these ideas sound pretty cool and I can give a non-committal maybe that I'm at least considering doing something like this in the future. The next section of questions I'm categorizing as advice that I'm not qualified to give, but I'll do my best. What are the necessary tools and materials for beginners? There's a lot to say on this topic and I could probably make a whole video about it, but in the meantime, check out the Black Magic Craft video in the description. If you had a thousand dollars to spend on crafting supplies and tools, what would you spend it on? I'm going to answer this one personally based on the things I already have, but if I was to splurge right now, I'd probably get a 3D printer, a big O set of airbrush paints, and a hot wire foam cutting table. What are some words of advice you would give past Studson? This is probably extra cheesy advice that I'm still working through with present Studson, but my advice is not to try to force creating art at the pace that YouTube seems to want it. Create the things you want to create when you want to create them. How can someone make a living out of building miniatures? Also, can you actually make a living out of it, or do you have a real job? I'm just an amateur miniature hobbyist that had a real job unrelated to miniatures all of my adult life, so I don't feel I can give good advice other than what I've encountered for myself. In short, I think there are ways to make a living from miniatures, whether it's through YouTube, Twitch, selling miniatures on Etsy, doing commissions, etc. The challenge is finding a unique voice, finding the people that vibe with your voice, and continually tapping into the things that motivate you. You make your models to standard miniature scale. That means math. How do you math? What tips do you have for folks who struggle with numbers in general? I do most things at 28 millimeter scale, which is helpful because everything I build is a size reference for things I build after. For measuring purposes, I always keep a few metric and imperial rulers and a square ruler for 90 degree angles close at hand. I don't strictly use metric or imperial, but actually switch back and forth between them, choosing whichever one makes the math easier at any given moment. Figuring out sizes, angles, and shapes is always confusing, so don't be afraid to either print out references or templates at the size you want them, or if you don't have a printer, you could try tracing out buildings or shapes from your computer or tablet screen. The tracing technique is a good method to avoid using maths. What advice would you have for someone who has hand tremors or just generally shaky hands? The best advice comes from the channel Terrainosaur, who has several videos on this exact topic. Link in the description. What are the tools you should never cheap out on? These aren't expensive, but never neglect switching out blades on your craft knife for a nice, sharp, fresh blade. I bought a giant bulk pack of X-Acto knife blades and I switch out a few times on every project, even if when I'm switching out, it still feels quite sharp to the naked touch. Are there any tools you find yourself reaching for more than you expected? My divine god hand nippers. I originally got them just for model kits, but they cut so well that I sometimes use them for things I shouldn't, like hard plastic dollar store toys, or even coffee stirring sticks. I deserve to go to hobby jail. Are there any big crafting lessons you've learned that you wish you knew sooner? The importance of wearing a mask. I used to spray paint and sand a bunch of stuff as a kid, but I never wore a mask at all back then, but I definitely do now, so make sure you protect your lungs. Nice hat. What tips would you suggest to a novice who wants to jump in? And should I work up to my MC Escher dollhouse, or do you think I should jump straight into it? I say just jump right in. My path was watching a bunch of other YouTube videos and mimicking their projects, but there are many paths. I would personally try just a single MC Escher staircase first before getting sucked into the whole labyrinth, though. Do you think it would be a good idea to build a book nook for a little library? If so, how would you go about doing that and what would you build? Sounds cute. As long as you have the permission of the little librarian, sure, why not? I'd probably use something sturdy for the base, like wood, so that I could permanently screw it into the shelf if possible. Other than that, the normal book nook advice probably applies. For theme, I'd personally go with a Fahrenheit 451 diorama. Is eating slash slurping the Mod Podge water stuff legal? Please get back to me as soon as you can. I think I've angered some government officials with my choices. Rest easy, my friend. You are safe. You have broken no government laws by consuming glue except for the laws of your own body's health. How do you approach art block? I try to make sure that every project I do has at least one new thing about it to help keep me motivated. But if I'm in a real art block or I have motivation issues, I'll take breaks and do something completely different until I feel motivated again. I don't try to force making things if I'm not feeling it. All right, next question. What is love? Hmm. Alexa, what is love? Bill Works once said, love is a four letter word that you can use in various ways that are mostly positive. Hell the next set of questions are all popular media related. Top 5 Favorite Anime 
My first two favorites come from my middle school days, which were Dragon Ball Z and Ranma One Half. These were the two shows that first got me into anime. Then in no particular order, other shows I love are Death Note, Monster, and Mob Psycho 100. What's your favorite though? I need a new show to watch. Favorite Pokemon? As a kid, it was Kadabra, but now my current favorites are all the poison types that need more love, like Garbodor. Here's my whole poison squad from Pokemon Shield. Favorite Digimon? Easy. Wear Garurumon. Just look at him. Favorite dinosaur? Styracosaurus. Favorite Cinco product from the Tim and Eric universe, and would you ever craft any of them? The one I probably think about the most is the sleep watching chair. I already have a chair and a bed, so I'm pretty much 90% of the way through crafting this one. Come on. Yeah. What's your favorite childhood cartoon? Dexter's Laboratory. What would you say are your biggest fandoms? I'm pretty into Jurassic Park, kaiju movies, and most of the stuff you see on this channel. Speaking of Jurassic Park, what are your favorite quotes from the movie? <laughs> favorite PC games. When I first bought my own PC, Bioshock was the first game I played. It was beautiful, the water effects blew my mind, and the big daddies were terrifying, so it left a big impact on me. I also spent many years being unable to stop playing the Korean MMO Ragnarok Online. Favorite video game of all time? Nintendo 64 is probably the most nostalgic console for me, so Majora's Mask and Banjo-Kazooie are two of my favorites. I also like very atmospheric puzzle platformers like Limbo and Inside. What element do you think you would wield in Avatar The Last Airbender? I'd probably be an earthbender. I'm an unwavering and boring stone. Also, Toph is my favorite character. Dream franchise or movie remake? While this isn't a remake, I really want to see a Star Fox movie made in the 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles style with full costumes. Ooh, while this also isn't a remake technically, I wouldn't mind a reboot origin movie of what came before Jurassic Park with the building of Isla Nublar. Favorite mech? Ultron Gundam from Gundam Wing. I love those dragon arms. Favorite Transformer? Waspinator from Beast Wars. S tier comic relief when I was a kid. Who did you marry in Stardew Valley? No one actually, but I'm currently in a relationship with Abigail, Leah, Emily, Shane, and Elliot. If I had to choose, I would actually choose Maru, but it has more to do with her parents, Robin and Demetrius. I wish I could marry them. Shrek saxophone? Nah, Shrek clarinet. What does your me look like? Favorite Ninja Turtle, and which one do you align most closely with personality-wise? Favorite was always Michelangelo growing up because he was fun and seemed the most into pizza, which were important factors for me. Uh, today I might align more with Donatello because I vibe with his resourcefulness. I also like that he does machines. Is Clifford the Big Red Dog a kaiju? Yes, so is Cat Bus. Could Clifford take on Godzilla? Um, I don't want to get into spoilers before the legendary picture movie comes out. I'm also just really excited for Hideaki Anno's upcoming origin film. Next are a whole bunch of food questions. Pineapple on pizza? Yeah. Thoughts on cilantro? Yeah. Eggs? Yeah. Tea or coffee? Yeah, but mostly coffee. I start every morning with a nice slow pour of that delicious brown juice. If you could only eat one type of food for an entire year, what would it be and why is it not peaches? It's not peaches because it would be eggs. Incredible, egg. I love eggs. What's your favorite fruit? What is your favorite cuisine? Egg. It's really hard to pick just one, but I really love Mexican and Tex-Mex cuisine the most. Is ketchup considered a smoothie? No, ketchup is a salad. Next, we had a few Dungeons & Dragons questions. Since you make all your projects at the standard mini scale, do you run a campaign? Are you a DM? Even though most of the things I make are at standard 28mm mini scale, I am not actually a dungeon master, and nothing I've crafted has ever been seen in a game yet, though I would love for that to change. I've been a player in several campaigns, but most of the time it's been theater of the mind, augmented with character minis and map layouts. The first time I played was in 2006, which was in the era of 3rd edition I think, but I don't remember anything from that experience, so I would mostly say 5e is all I've ever played. The best campaign for me is any time you're in a group of friends you get along with, and more importantly, when your playstyles align. 
In a particular favorite game, I played a 311-year-old dwarven cleric named Glord von Schweetz, a candy maker that lost his teeth from a lifetime of caramels and lollipops. Next are the miscellaneous questions I failed to categorize in the previous categories. Have you been doing okay during the pandemic? I'm doing all right, thanks for asking. Even if there wasn't a pandemic, I would already be working from home, so it's more or less the same minus the additional social interaction I would be getting from the outside world. How would you describe your ideal Sunday? Roll out of bed at 8 a.m., make a perfectly measured pour over coffee, have a quick walk or a hike outside in the sun, go to a farmer's market and buy too much bread and maybe a really nice heirloom tomato. Come back home and then gorge myself on some early afternoon French toast. Maybe take a quick nap before I do enough yard work to feel exhausted for a nice restful night's sleep. I probably sound like a basic cottagecore square, which I proudly am. What hobbies do you enjoy doing in your spare time when you are not crafting or editing videos? Normal human thing. I like cooking. I like hiking. I like hang out with friend. I like video game. If you could have any creature for a pet, be it from games, movies, or real life, what would it be and why? Those tiny dinosaurs from the 1993 film Prehysteria, because it's really just an extension from my Jurassic Park obsession. Would you rather run everywhere you go or scream everything you say? <laughs> I need to exercise more anyway, so I choose run everywhere I go. I'm generally a quiet person and I dislike speaking too much if I don't have to, so screaming everything I say sounds like a nightmare. When you meet a new person, do you proudly introduce yourself as a miniature builder or do you feel it out a bit and then mention it later on? Probably the latter, or I would let my social anxiety take the wheel and wait till they ask me what I do instead. What fantasy weapon would you use in real life if you had the chance? These. My friends and I almost recreated the entire Fellowship of the Ring from scratch in high school. Yeah, the ring to Frodo. So this is Gandalf's staff that I made from a tree I uprooted. What was something silly you believed as a kid that is charming to think about now? I thought for sure cloned dinosaurs based on the science in Jurassic Park would be everywhere by now. I feel betrayed. I was wondering if you could teach me to be as awesome as you. I'm a vampire and- Yes, watch what we do in the shadows to learn how to be a cool vampire. Who is your biggest comedy inspiration? This changes very often and the list is long, but the most recent person slash show that inspired me is How To with John Wilson. Most often though, comedy inspiration isn't tied to specific people, but instead just random internet garbage that's shared around. Also my girlfriend inspires me with her funnies. She watches everything before it gets uploaded and sometimes I steal her jokes with her permission. And then can you say, it's... And sometimes without my permission. <laughs> Speaking of comedy, what was the last thing that made you laugh? Two things come to mind. Firstly, Slamilton. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. And then also the recent string of YTPs uploaded by The Things in the last year. The last section of questions are all about crafting aspirations. What fictional building or object would you create full scale if time, money, and physics weren't an issue? I would stand on the shoulders of geniuses to make sure no expense was spared to build this building. What other buildings or scenes would you like to craft from the Jurassic Park movies? See previous answer. Another memorable scene for me is the RV going over the cliff in the Lost World. Who is your dream YouTube collaboration? Hello and welcome to the Crab Man Show. I don't deserve a collab with the craftsman though. I kind of hope it never happens so I can just dream about it forever instead. And now for the final question, which was asked many times, but this iteration from a longtime patron was too powerful for me to read, so let's invite another longtime patron to read it instead. Hi there, Studson. Hey Mike, take it away. What do you want your magnum opus to be? The perfect craft. The one thing you want to make with your own bare hands above all else, to be your legacy. Wow, my legacy. That's a big question. To I stand haven't... from the tallest peak and shout, I made this! With my own two hands! Wow, maybe something And from... I think it's pretty cool! Dang, I don't know. I don't think any answer I can give will feel satisfying now. I try not to hype things up too much, but the current project I'm looking forward to the most is Howl's Moving Castle. But I've never been that great at thinking too far ahead, so I don't have a magnum opus in mind at the moment.
My general magnum opus is to keep having fun making the stuff I'm making, and I hope everyone else keeps having fun making things too. I asked my patrons a few days ago to share some of the things they've been making, so please enjoy this delicious sampler platter of some of their creative juices on display. This video would not have been possible without all of the questions and support provided by everyone on Patreon. I truly appreciate all of their support they lend me in helping me make these videos. In total, there were over 120 questions submitted, including duplicates, but if there are any questions on your mind that weren't answered in this video, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to either answer them there or possibly save them for a future Q&A video. Along with the upcoming Howl's Moving Castle video, I also owe a growing list of new patrons a shoutout in video form, which I'll be crafting rhymes from and writing as lyrics in the next patron shoutout song. Until next time, please enjoy this wonderful art submitted by my patrons, along with a pivotal scene from my family's version of Jurassic Park. The radio is out too. I think we should just stay here. Are the kids okay? Why wouldn't they be? It's just a little hiccup in the power, that's all. Maybe it's the power trying to come back on. Where's the goat? <gasps> Dr. Grant. Boy, I hate being right all the time. Oh, wow, did you stay to the very end? Wow, you deserve a special prize for that. Here, have a picture of Birdie that was just taken today, and here's a video to show how good she is at catching snack in midair.